A warm welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is the first time you're coming across Cat Vlogs, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to tap the post notification bell so that you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back to watch my content. I really, really appreciate. Um, so please like this video before we start watching because it's going to be an informative and educative video. Now, um, after I have shopped for you, or if you just want to start a business and um, you have already bought the stock, you have received your stock of maybe 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, depending on what exactly you stocked. The first thing you're supposed to do is make sure that you go through the receipts and ensure that all the products, as you remove them from the box, all the products are available. So in short, um, you will find that most of the products will have a tick mark at the left side of the receipt. But because you are the receiver, you are supposed to remove every product from the box or from the sack while doing a tick to ensure that everything that you ordered or anything that was delivered to you is in that particular parcel. After you are done with taking all the receipts, the second thing is maybe organizing those products in particular shelves or in a way in which you'll feel favorable by you. And then you take a notebook, a plain notebook, an exercise book or a counter book, and note down all the products that you have in your shop. And um, if you're a beginner and you don't know um, a lot about products, you can do an A, B, C, D format where all the products that we start with letter A, you write them down, all the products that start with B, like that. And then make sure that after the products column, you write a whole cell column of all the products. Now, there is this challenge that gets a lot of people that are beginners. Uh, you'll find that most of the products on average will cost 360 shillings per dozen. That means that most of the products on a whole cell will cost you 30 shillings. So, most people think that I'm supposed to sell this product at only 50 shillings. No, that is not the, the right way to do that mathematics. So there are some products that are known to cost 50 shillings. There are some products that must cost 60. And you can also get a product that is well selling at 360 per dozen. But that particular product should cost 100 shillings. Now, how are you going to be familiar with uh, the pricing of the products? Number one, uh, there is a way in which the company will set the, the retail prices of all their products. For example, for the braids, um, most of those braids will have a particular retail prices that are set by the industry or the factories. Now, the other way that you can get to know the prices is by asking around. You can even go to a bigger beauty shop like Best Lady or Super Cosmetics where you can walk in and check the prices. Although most of these beauty shops will have a bit higher prices than normal because they, their target customers are different. Now, a product can also get its retail prices by you deciding. You can decide, for example, if you are selling something like weaves, you're supposed to know that weaves should be doubled. The price should be doubled from the wholesale price. If you have bought a weave at 400 shillings, it is wise enough to tell a customer that that weave will cost you 800 shillings because normally in a beauty shop there is a lot of negotiation that brings room for you to play around with the prices. So don't hesitate to, to just mention a bigger price and always ensure that this customer doesn't leave just because you have doubled the price. You can even like, um, if the weave is at 350, you can even like tell the customer that the weave is at uh, 650, 550, you're still going to get a lot of profit. So uh, that is another way that you can get to know the uh, prices. I can also uh, teach you on how to price your product so that at least you don't go into losses. I offer those services and I've done that to a lot of customers. Now, what can you combine with a beauty shop? A beauty shop is a 
is a shop that sells a lot of necessities. Most of the things in a beauty shop are things that are needed in our every day-to-day -day life, like braids, there is a, um, hair bars, there are beads, earrings, necklaces, chains, makeup products. What else can you incorporate in a beauty shop? So if you, that, you have that beauty shop that has already started, or if you have this other business that is a mali mali business, and what is a mali mali business? A business where you're selling basics, basics that are needed in the society around you. For example, you're selling cups, you're selling plates, you're selling scoring uh, the sponge for washing maybe utensils, such kind of things. You're selling um, things like buckets, basins, such uh, combs. You can also incorporate some of the cosmetic products on this side. And also these Mali Mali products can also be incorporated on the other side. Now, both businesses, cosmetic businesses and um, Mali Mali businesses can all accommodate what we call toiletries. So both of them, if you have a cosmetic shop, you can also incorporate a toiletry business. So toiletries are products like you have tissues, we have serviettes, we have what we call kitchen towels, we have diapers of all kinds, we have pads, we have what we call wet wipes, and we also have panty liners and so forth. There are a lot of products. Aside from that, you can also incorporate what we call undergarments. And undergarments come in different categories, different qualities, depending on your neighborhood. So you should stock things that will favor you because you want to stock those products to, to make them start moving as fast as possible. You're not there to just take TikTok videos so that people can see that you have a business, no. So you're supposed to set up a business that you know is going to run so that you'll keep on restocking, restocking, restocking. Now, so you can also add a lot of stock in that shop from the different categories that I have mentioned. Remember that in a cosmetic shop, we also have broader categories. And if you don't have that large amount of capital, what can you do? You can decide to specialize. Specialization means that you can decide to set a cosmetic shop, but categorize it into a jewelry shop, a makeup shop, a hair shop only. And also you can decide to have a hair products a shop only or a hair accessory product only. So you can also decide, ah, let me deal with um, with skin. You can say to do everything, scrub, toners, facial cleansers, everything. So you can decide if you have a lot of capital, you can start with uh, everything. But if you don't have enough capital, you can say to specialize. Now, so after you have done uh, the, 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 the writing, you have a notebook, you have written the products, you have written the column of wall sale, you have written the retail prices. What next? What next? Selling the products, but the product uh, that you maybe you are selling at this particular time, the price you will mention to the customer should always be a bit higher because there will always be room for negotiation. But some products do not have room for negotiation. Like for example, braids, a customer will just come and place 240 shillings on the table because they know um, one braid is 60 shillings. One braid is 60 shillings. But a product like a weave, somebody has come to your shop and they want a blessing weave. You'll tell this person, this weave will cost you 600 shillings. But you know, the retail price, I, I mean the wholesale price for blessing weave is around 400 to 450 shillings. So you've told the customer the will be 600 shillings. So you can you can negotiate up to 550 or even um, 580 shillings. So don't put fixed prices uh, in such a way that um, you, 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 you are not going to reap a lot of profit. Remember that the main aim of starting a business is to grow. You want to grow. You want to become big. You want to to uh, in a few years to come we want that business to grow one thing that i will tell you as a beginner of a business don't be settled don't feel like now you've started a business now you've relaxed now every morning is taking tiktok videos please come and buy no 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 you should always aim higher but um you should always think of growth you should always think of how can i expand this business to even become a wholesale shop it is really really possible because some factories are even accepting you to start with a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings, which is possible when you have when you have a beauty shop or a mali mali shop. Now, 
for the first few months when you start your business, this is something that I want you to know that the business might not be giving you as much profit as you think. Now you should give your business time to crawl. You should give your business time to cry. You should give your business time to adjust to the environment. Nobody knew the business was there. So you should give people time to know that there is a business in that estate. So within two to three months, be sure that that business will start giving you some decent amount of income per day and definitely between 2,000 to 5,000 profit per day if it is well stocked. Something that really uh, shocks me, uh, okay, not shocking as such, but some people would want to start a business with 10,000 shillings and this person has rented a space that is 5,000 shillings. So you don't work like that. So if you have a business that has costed you maybe 100 to 200,000 Kenyan shillings, you should have a space that is between 2,000 to 15,000 Kenyan shillings. That is the amount of rent you should be paying for a business that is worth 100,000 to 200,000 Kenyan shillings. Don't exceed over 10,000 unless you have an intention of adding more stock. Now, next video, I'm going to talk about what I have learned in the years that I have been a cosmetic bulk shopper and what I feel I should have done differently when I was opening my cosmetic shop. So that is a video that is coming on your screen very, very soon. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate. Also, remember to subscribe. So without further ado, I'll close this video from this particular time. I hope that you have enjoyed watching my content. I will see you on my next video. Bye.